So if we look now at DHCP, so this is the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And so it's designed to, so when a computer first joins a, a network uh, that's running internet protocol usually, uh, it needs to know what its IP address is, it needs to know the address uh, of the default gateway, of the default router, uh, and it may need to know other information such as you know, what's the, um, uh, the organization that it's based in and uh, potentially other configuration information. So DHCP exists to automate this process so that you can have a computer be connected into a network that's running DHCP and it can automatically obtain this information and then be able to, you know, to proceed on and operate uh, correctly. So the DHCP server um, is the, the piece that actually responds to these uh, requests from hosts. And you need to obviously have at least one DHCP server uh, for a, a network that, or a, an internet network that you want to maintain. So not internet wide, but for example, in an organization, uh, you would typically have at least one DHCP server that might serve many networks or in subnets uh, within that organization. So uh, at the simplest level, the DHCP server maintains a pool of the available um, IP addresses uh, so that they can be allocated out uh, on request when a computer joins uh, the network. Oops, if we come back across to here, right. So when a, a computer is newly booted or uh, attempts to attach to the, uh, the network, um, it sends a DHCP discover uh, frame. Uh, well, sorry, it's a packet because it's an IP packet in a, uh, typically in an ethernet frame. And it's sent to the broadcast IP address, uh, the global broadcast IP address. Uh, and so if the DHCP server is on the local network segment, it will receive that directly. Um, if it's not, uh, then you need to have DHCP relay agents that monitor for these packets and then send them directly uh, to the DHCP server. And again, this might be going over other network segments uh, in the organization. Um, and then it will wait for the response on the DHCP server and it can relay that back through to the host uh, on the network where it is. So it's broadcast up to the point of the first DHCP relay, or if there are no DHCP relays, then it will be broadcast to the directly connected DHCP server. Um, but otherwise, it's unicast uh, from there. Uh, and so there's a whole variety of um, uh, hmm. uh, configuration information that DHCP can provide. Okay, so that's DHCP. Let's have a look at um, ICMP, the Internet Control Message Protocol. Um, so this is one that you probably, if you've encountered before, it would be for things like doing an internet ping, is actually implemented using ICMP. So it defines a collection of error messages uh, and messages that can be sent out uh, from a host. Uh, and really it's designed to, uh, you know, to provide information about uh, the state and operation of the network. So for example, uh, you, may, you can get a, an ICMP response that actually says a host is unreachable. So if ARP, for example, is not able to resolve the host or you know, the some other way the network is able to discover uh, that it can't provide connectivity to a particular host, um, uh, that can be re uh, reported back uh, via an ICMP message. Um, or if the reassembly process for a, a packet has failed, uh, that can also be indicated back via ICMP. Um, or if the TTL of a packet reaches zero, that uh, can also be uh, reported back. And so this TTL reporting is actually used for tools like Traceroute, uh, where you can actually uh, send packets out with differing TTLs increasing by one each time. This is time to live. Um, so that you'll get the, uh, uh, the TTL reached zero point at progressive hops through the networks. So you can actually trace where the packets are going through the network. Uh, also, if the IP header checksum fails, uh, we can, can be generated. Uh, and some of them, uh, like for ping, uh, are generated a little bit more intentionally where you actually send out a ping request and you get an ICMP pong back. So ping pong uh, is kind of the, um, uh, the terminology used in there. Um, also, um, you can get ICMP redirect from, uh, where a router actually says, uh, you know, you should try sending to that host via this alternate route instead. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a, a number, this is only a, a small subset of the ICMP messages uh, that are out there. And we have a duplicate slide, that's fine. Okay, so if we, uh, actually we'll come back to this in the next video, we'll try and keep the videos a bit 